Erwin Harris, Director of Product Marketing uh, here at JAMA Software. I'm here with Robin Calhoun, who's the uh, Senior Product Manager here at JAMA Software. And we're going to be talking about traceability. And specifically, we're going to talk about the, the future of traceability and sort of our vision of traceability and what it means for the customers that we work with, especially in the system space. And so I thought we would just start with you telling me a little bit about your interpretation of traceability. How do you see it and what do you think of it? Yeah, uh, so traceability at its simplest mm -hmm. description is really just interconnected data and it's really useful for when you're building something because you need to understand not only the thing you're working on but sort of in how it interconnects with things like tests and your strategy and just sort of all the different kinds of data you need in a company so that's the simplest way to think about it uh, so the work that we're doing right now in traceability so what is that um, how is that manifesting itself? Or what are we actually working on right now in our solution? Yeah, so we've had a tool that shows traceability mm -hmm. for a while. It's called our Coverage Explorer. Um, but we wanted to make it a little bit more live, a little bit more interactive. Mm -hmm. Since there is so much dense data in JAMA, we wanted to actually surface it a little bit mm -hmm. more and allow you to interact with it. Since when you look at data, you kind of want to do something with it. You don't want to just sort of True. absorb and go, oh, that's nice. You want to actually fix it if it's broken. So what mm -hmm. we're doing is we built a new view. It's called Trace View. And and you will not only be able to see your data sort of upstream and downstream from what you're looking at, you'll be able to act on it. So that means fixing relationships, adding them, deleting them, hmm. adding new items. So we're trying to make it a little bit more dynamic and something you use every day as opposed to at the beginning or the end of a project. So is, is that is that different from traceability today? So what is the, the big difference in terms of how we implement traceability versus what yeah. traceability traditionally is today? Yeah, traditionally it's been more of a report. It's more of a, mm. a static thing like in Excel or some sort of document that you generate. And I'm hoping with these new features that make it more live and actionable and exciting that you'll actually sort of work in it day to day and then it'll be more sort of what you use to do your work as opposed to something you produce after the fact. Mm. So working in it as opposed to right. with it. And what kind of questions are people asking when they're working on traceability? Like when and, and who yeah. are these people that who are these who people are these that people? work on traceability? What do they, why do they care? <laughs> yeah, um, there are a lot of questions you can ask traceability. That's kind of the cool huh. thing is you can kind of ask anything you want. The sort of required questions you're supposed to ask are, is this thing covered? Is this thing actually mm. tested? So the most basic use case is coverage, which is why we called it the coverage explorer. Right off the Back bat. in the day, right? Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so that is really just looking at all the requirements you said you built, making sure that it is covered mm. um, with test coverage, meaning that the tests are there, that they're written well, mm. that they've passed. So that's the most basic question is, are the tests there? Did they pass? And mm -hmm. are they uh, what I expect them to be? But there are all kinds of questions you can ask of your requirements, like mm. who wrote them? Why are they here? Why are we building this thing? You know, when was this built? Um, all, anything. I mean, mm. it's sort of the map for your product. And if you... Mm. The map. Uh, the map, Tell yeah. me a bit more about this map <laughs> of your product. It seems yeah. different from traceability, but yeah. It, <laughs> Kind of it's intriguing. a concept I've been thinking about. It's it's more like you're navigating the data and less like you're building a report because it mm. changes over time. It can be copied and you can make different versions of it over time. So it's sort of like instead of just a static here is the truth, it's it's sort of this dynamic interrelationship mm. of information and, and maps are kind of like that in that you 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 get into the details of it as you sort of zoom in so if you're looking for a location you can look at a location at a high level mm -hmm. like where is this state and you can kind of zoom in and go where is this restaurant on the street there's sort of different levels of questions you can ask it and it's less like what is the united states you wouldn't answer that question mm. with a single answer it kind of depends on what you're asking so the way i think about the new traceability is it allows you to ask sort of more vague questions and kind of zoom in and zoom out and, mm. and use the data to sort of feed the answer you need as opposed to this. What's is the scope of that? I mean, how, how broad does that yeah. go or how deep does the rabbit hole go in that? <laughs> I don't know, hopefully not too crazy deep because <laughs> right. there's only so much data that you can load quickly. But yeah, we're trying to find that out. I mean, we're, we're making mm. the new view in JAMA at least dynamically loading so that you don't have to load the whole world and, and sort of scope in from there. It's sort of as you move around the data, it shows up as you need it mm. um, so that you can kind of explore as opposed to sort of report on and know what you want to answer at the beginning. Mm. So the way I think about it too is it allows you to be a little bit more fluid with your questions and less sort of, I want to know exactly how many mm. things meet these criteria and you can kind of change your criteria as you're going. So mm. kind of like if you're traveling, you know you want to eat pizza, mm -hmm. but you may not know kind of like which 
pizza place in particular, or right. how you want to get there, you start with, or, all right. Which the, how they rank. How they rank, yeah, how many people have visited. <laughs> how many comments have been on it. How it's expensive right. is it? Like, there's all kinds of questions. So you sure. start off with granular, I want pizza. Mm -hmm. I am in Oregon. And mm -hmm. then you want pizza that's within 10 blocks, because you want to walk to it. And then you want a place mm -hmm. that's casual, which most of them are. It's probably not a good criteria. But you can kind of zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, and then are they open right now? That's more of a temporal question. Maybe right. they've closed, maybe it's past 10 o'clock. So hmm. good traceability allows you to ask more than one question and allows you to kind of, right. as you learn more, keep asking questions, keep digging. Sort of this discovery. Out. So it sounds like what you're describing is actually this discovery aspect of yeah. traceability. Like, so tell me a little more about that. Yeah, that's what I think is exciting is that hmm. you go in with a question and most people who are curious, like most people who are building products who are in system space, they continue to ask questions and they continue to learn. And as you get more data, it kind of compels you to keep digging. And so what I'm hoping with modern traceability is that you can actually do that and not need to go in and build a specific report or specific view for each question. You can just kind of flex it as you mm. need to. So it's, it is kind of like exploring and less like a one-to-one -one question to answer, I think, with, with good traceability.